Dover, we use a master plan to help guide our growth and development, and that growth and development is both commercial and residential in nature. And one of the things that we've seen over the past 20 plus years is a move towards less residential growth and more commercial growth and development. If you look at our tax valuation, about 20 years ago we were at 79% residential valuation, 20% commercial. Now we're at about 73-24. That growth and development, though, we want to continue towards more commercial growth. As we look at ways to stem that tide and we look at ways to add more commercial land area, one of the ways we have to look at is, is there land that is currently zoned residential that could be zoned commercial? City Council feels that we need to balance commercial versus residential development and right now we're kind of upside down because the taxpayers are the people that are carrying the burden. So by rezoning will help change that percentage and our hope was to increase commercial development over residential. First of all, it helps to, um, to stabilize the tax, uh, the tax rate paid by ratepayers over a longer period of time. This is a process that may take as long as 10 years. Um, but we have a tsunami of uh, residential uh, multifamily development going on, and it's adding impact to our school systems and, and other services uh, in the city. So it's very critical to us that we begin to move that ratio towards higher uh, commercial content for a number of reasons. One, uh, commercial content adds jobs, a, a major consideration. Secondly, commercial um, taxation, if you take a look at the per acre uh, revenues developed by commercial in terms of tax rateable base, it's much higher than residential with no school impacts. What, what we've observed uh, from DIBITA, with the Dover Business Industrial Development Authority, is that there's a, a, a high demand for certain types of commercial industrial activity. Uh, so we see that on a day-to-day on a -day basis. On the other hand, there's a, a, we pretty much built out the commercial industrial land that we have on the books. At least that is what, what can be developed. There is certainly some land that is uh, zoned as industrial or business, uh, but because of environmental constraints, it's difficult to develop that. So we really need to be looking at more um, appropriate land to accommodate the future demand for um, uh, business and industry. We never know what's going to break in the field, but we have technicians out there and they're finding out is it a, is it the main unit, is it a, a printer, is it a keyboard, and whatever that is, they're swapping that with a, a good one that came from us and sending the core back here so we, we can repair that. So anything we involved in that point of sale system is coming here. Growth for a community is to balance that commercial, industrial, uh, along with the residential so that you get a blended tax rate. Um, so companies like ourselves, we pay a significant amount of real estate taxes um, and we don't really require any services other than the, the plowing the roads. Uh, so it's a, it's a big benefit for a community. The City Council at its orientation meeting uh, shortly after their election uh, indicated as one of its four major goals this rezoning process and they tasked DIBITA, uh, the Dover Business Industrial Development Authority, uh, to begin to, to make this happen. Subsequently, we, um, we worked very hard to identify with the planning department 
every appropriate residential parcel and um, uh, parcels that went together that had the requisite infrastructure and water, sewer, roadways, uh, communication capabilities, and had an appropriate uh, buffer from existing residential uh, zoning uh, so that it could be considered uh, to transfer over time from uh, residential to commercial use. I think now where the amounts of large developable properties are getting smaller, that we need to take action now sooner than later. By continuing to go after higher valued products and, and businesses and to continue to attract things like Stonewall Kitchen and uh, Rand Whitney and some of these manufacturing businesses, you have a better chance of having a higher valuation. You need the land though to put them in. You need the commercial area to have that opportunity exist. I think that the city has learned over the years that um, there are ways in which you can mitigate the impact of business and industrial development through um, landscaping requirements or setback requirements. I think the city is particularly sensitive to that type of issue with respect to um, adjacent, adjacent properties. The other thing is that um, sometimes when we talk about industry, people immediately think about, you know, the smokestacks of the steel industry. You know, we don't, that industry, type of industry, just doesn't exist anymore. It's much more light business, light industry. So you're really talking about buildings and not smokestacks. And there are ways that you can design the buildings, design the property, uh, to mitigate the potential impacts. In some cases, the residential requirements um, aren't as stringent as those for industrial. So in fact, if we put residential next to residential, there may in fact be more of a perceived impact uh, than you might have with um, a smaller footprint, uh, overall footprint of um, business and industry. If people hadn't looked at how land was zoned and rezoned commercial areas 20, 30, 40 years ago, we wouldn't have the opportunity we have today. Enterprise Park, until the early 90s, was zoned residential. Liberty Mutual's 270 acres was residential. Councils and planning boards at that time knew that they needed to continue our commercial growth potential and they rezoned those lands. Those are hard decisions to make and they went through and evaluated them with the best information they had possible and look at the benefits the community has reaped because of those choices. We're doing that now so our community 20 years from now can have the same potential opportunities that we have today. It's about stewardship, it's about looking at the community and making sure that our kids have the best community possible just as our parents gave us the best community possible today.